Buddy, hope you're doing great today. Um, wanted to uh, do a, a little video here to introduce the concept of perceptual mapping. So when we start to do perceptual mapping, this is a data-driven statistical approach to understanding um, a position, our positioning in the marketplace. And importantly, also understanding where our market segments um, lie on key elements of 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 the uh, of the product or service that you're that you're offering so there's going to be four different steps here when we start looking at perceptual mapping we'll look at a couple examples here of what's what we can do but um, the first step here is um, to, to understand through customer profiles what customers want in a product um, we would get like, for instance, a group of um, attributes or features of a product. Um, oftentimes we do this through focus groups. And so we ask customers in this product, what features do you want? What features are most important to you? What, what, what characteristics of the product or service drive you to purchase or make a purchase decision? Those, those are gonna be something called determinant attributes. Um, and they're incredibly important to understand. They actually make up the axes for a perceptual map. So when you look at the X and Y axis uh, in, in perceptual mapping, and, or X, Y, or Z, um, the, those, those, uh, those, those axes are, are the features that are most important to the customer. And again, we call them determinant attributes. The second thing that we do, once we understand what those are, is we start to gather data. Um, we look at, uh, we ask consumers um, to, to rate the, the, the importance of these determinant attributes, but we also want to, so for each customer, how important are these attributes? But then we also ask them to provide their perception of how a company performs on those attributes. So if we have three or four different companies that compete with each other, we'll do a survey together. We'll ask customers to rate these brands or these products on these attributes. So we have a rating system. We have a rating for how well firms perform on, the, on these attributes, but also how important these attributes are to the customer. So there's two things that are measured simultaneously when we gather the data. Third thing that we do is we start taking the data um, and we start applying it to our market segments. Um, and we, we can um, take this data and actually use something called cluster analysis to group consumers by the importance of these attributes to them. So we can have different groups of consumers and for some groups, price might be more important of a det determined attribute than quality or product features or di different elements of the product itself. Um, and so we want to want to be able to know and understand exactly exactly what that is. Um, and then we want to start step four, we want to start mapping. We want to start putting putting this data, uh, you know, into some 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 geographic or, or some 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 Cartesian plane space, if you will. Uh, again, you can use two or three determinant attributes, depending on if it's a two or three dimensional perceptual map. Um, and 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 this is a traditional way we we do this. So just to kind of think about the way perceptual maps might look. Um, oftentimes, this is called a generic price quality map. Um, a lot of times, price and quality um, relate to each other, um, and they're usually positively related in the sense that when quality goes up, price goes up, and so forth. So, if you kind of think about where where products lie in the minds of consumers, they're probably going to be in some of these diagonal spaces from the lower left to the upper right. Um, now, again, this is kind of the initial look or the initial feel for what this might be. We can also start, again, using this process, we have a lot of data, so we can you know, add add some nuances to this. Um, this is this is a perceptual map. The the two determinant attributes that have been chosen 
our nutritional value and crunchiness for snacks, snack foods. Um, and, you know, snack foods is a big, big, big space. There's lots and lots of different types of snack, snacking foods, if you will. So crunchiness and nutritional value are two dimensions. Um, again, there are many other dimensions, but these were the two that were chosen to be shown on this map. Um, and presumably these two dimensions um, are in some way important to the consumer uh, in making their purchase decision. And so you can kind of see perceptually the consumers rate pizza kind of in the middle. Um, bagels, pretty close to pizza. Um, not really high in nutrition, not low in nutrition, and certainly not crunchy or, uh, I guess, smushy. I don't know what the opposite of crunchy is, but the low, low crunchy. But if you go up higher, you see things like raw vegetables, very crunchy, much more nutritionally, nutritionally valuable, um, right? Um, on the other side, you've got peanuts and pretzels and nachos, which are, again, very crunchy, but not perceived as nutritionally valuable. Um, and so you can kind of see where the scores of how these um, you know, uh, different, different different food choices uh, equate to a position on the map. So you have a nutritional value score and you have a crunchiness score. And when you pair those two together, you get a place somewhere on this map. Now, the circles indicate where there could be opportunities or spaces or gaps. Um, and so this might be also referred to as a gap map, um, where we are looking for areas that are underserved or not very well uh, covered, uh, if you will, by, by competitors or by product options. So these would be gap maps that are there. There are gaps in the map that indicate opportunities uh, where you could bring a new product that is maybe above pizza, uh, but to the left of beef jerky, you've got a space there that's not served by a current type of product. And there may be, there may be a market there of consumers that would want something that's sort of in between those, those those types of products. We don't know that, but just at this map tells us that there could be an opportunity in that space. Okay, so this is a gap map example. Now, this one, this map only illustrates positions of brands. What we can do is expand this a little bit. Um, and add other products. And so, uh, and there are other statistical methods um, that, that apply here as well. So um, something called multidimensional scaling or correspondence analysis takes us beyond a two or three dimensional space. Because when you're dealing with two or three dimensions, you're only dealing with two or three variables um, or determinant attributes. What if I had 10 or 15 or 20 though that were important and I wanted to do analysis on all of them simultaneously? There are statistical methods for you to do that. And again, they're you know a little bit beyond probably what we would cover here, uh, but multidimensional scaling allows you to load in a lot of variables and it creates from an origin a score and it places products in proximity to each other and markets in proximity to each other based on that score. Um, so if you think about if you have like 10 different variables and you group subjects um, by similarities, you have an origin and then the distance from that origin might be a group of consumers. and. And that's kind of the way the way it works. So you're not really dealing with axes in a traditional sense, um, but you're looking at patterns in the data that group our respondents and products um, in similar similar ways. Correspondence analysis is another technique that's similar that uses similar conceptual uh, similar methodologies. Uh, but MDS is something that you may use and, and CA. Um, so here's, again, kind of a, an extended version of that. And, and again, this video is not super long. Um, you should, at the end of this video, be able to construct a two or three space dimensional map. Um, and you should be familiar at least with the concepts of overlaying markets with products. So here's an example of a two space dimensional map. Um, and, and we have heavy and light beer 
versus budget and premium beer. So you have a price component and then we have a characteristic that might be a feature of, of the product itself. And we have described here a bunch of different bunch of different brands. Um, again, this would be, come from survey data. We would ask people to provide their perceptions of each of these brands on these different dimensions. Um, simultaneously, what we can do is create a kind of a mapping of different types of consumers. Again, go to a consumer profile and say each one of these are a different market segment and they're described, they're given a name, You've got the blue collar, the special occasions, the heavy, the light, less filling, popular with women, popular with men. So we have these different sort of types of types of uh, consumers, but also occasions, if you will. And you can kind of overlay that with the, the brands that are available. And you can kind of see where the Coors Light and the Miller Light are probably favored by consumers that prefer light and less filling beers. That kind of makes sense, right? We look at Budweiser, Miller, um, more popular with men. They border on the heavier type type of beers, something like that. If you push special occasions out further, you get Beck's and Heineken, um, something, something along those lines. When we move over to blue collar, and good value, we've got Old Milwaukee and Meisterbrow and Stroh's, right, in that space over there. And so now we get a much clearer, better, or fuller, we get a fuller view of where these brands overlay potential market segments. And so we've got people who are on a budget, you know, and Again, Old Milwaukee is kind of down, down, Old Milwaukee Light is down down in that space. Um, a good value you'd think it'd be up there too or in that space as well. Um, and again, we can look for gaps or spaces where markets are underserved. If we have, for instance, the full-bodied group of consumers, see there aren't a lot of beers right around that, that one line. And so there may be better opportunities to serve that market that aren't being that aren't available right now to them. And that might be a way we interpret this. So as we look at sort of positioning and positioning strategies, the next step, once we have a tool like this, is to think about where we want to be and how we can move ourselves into that space over a period of time and what marketing strategies we can use to do that. Okay, again, this is a real quick video, just kind of talking a little bit about perceptual maps and, and, and the techniques that are sometimes involved with that. Um, reach out, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.